In this video, I want to talk about how we can solve some of the issues with the linear probability model by creating a nonlinear discrete choice model. So the idea with the linear probability model is that we had, let's say, the probability that an individual goes to college, so the probability that our binary dependent variable college equals one, given we have the log of their parental wage, we might have a model which says that this is equal to alpha plus beta times the log of the parental wage, where in this circumstance you would suppose that beta was greater than naught because of the fact that as an individual's parents are richer or get richer, they are more likely to have children which themselves go on to college. And we spoke about how this linear combination of our independent variables, and in this case just one independent variable, has no particular bound in terms of its value. So in terms of alpha plus beta times log wage, it can go all the way at the bottom from minus infinity up to plus infinity at its upper limit. And we spoke about this being problematic because probabilities, this left-hand side here, is typically defined on a naught one boundary inclusive, so including naught and one. So that's problematic because essentially there are two ways in which our model can output nonsensical results. If the results from this model are greater than one, then that's nonsensical, and also if they're less than zero, they're also nonsensical. And we can draw a graph of exactly what's going on. So the idea here is that our x-axis here would be our linear combination of our independent variables, so alpha plus beta times the log of parental wage, and the y-axis here will just be whether an individual goes to college or not. And we've already spoken about the fact that college, whether an individual goes to college, is a one, zero variable, but I'm actually gonna talk about the probability that an individual goes to college. So we're gonna look at the probability which can lie also between naught and one. And the idea with our model up here, which is just a linear probability model, is that if we draw a graph of it, it looks something like this. So it's supposed to be a straight line. So the idea is that there are some regions for which the linear probability model looks like it might be doing OK. So between, let's say, this point X and this point Y, the model seems to be outputting relatively uh, sort of sensible results. Whereas if you consider the regions sort of either to the east of this point Y, so that's this region up here, and also the points to the west of X, which are these points down here, the model is outputting complete nonsense because there's no way a probability can lie outside of the range 0-1. Okay, so what can we do about this? Well, I want to illustrate this graphically, and the idea here is that we're going to create some sort of nonlinear model which is going to allow us to transform our independent variables which at the moment are situated on sort of the range minus infinity all the way up to plus infinity and it's going to transform that to a naught one sort of range. So the idea here is that we take some nonlinear transformation of our independent variables. So I'm going to call this a function f, and the defining properties of this function f are that in the case when beta is greater than naught, when alpha plus beta times log of parental wage is very, very small, when it goes towards minus infinity, we want the function to take on the value of zero. So this is the sort of value of the function at, that should be minus infinity. So it's zero at that particular range. And similarly, when the value of the independent variables or the linear combination of the independent variables is high, so at plus infinity, we have that the function take, should take on the value of plus one. And we would like a function which connects these two boundary values of our function in as sort of neat and smooth as way as possible, and also a way which makes sense. And you might hypothesize that a potential potential function might look something like that. But we're going to talk about the explicit functional form or some particular types of function which can actually do this type of behaviour. 
But the idea with a nonlinear transformation of the independent variables is that now we have the probability that college equals one given our log of our parental wage is equal to some nonlinear function of the independent variables. So that's a nonlinear function of alpha plus beta times log wage. And two of the examples of this, our, of which we commonly, commonly come across, are logit and probit models. And they're going to be what we're going to be discussing in the next few videos.